Hi everybody, Lydia Crowder here with Build Show Network and today we're going to talk all about mixing mud. I get this question all the time, how do you get your mud so creamy, what are you doing? So we're just going to go ahead and break down how to mix up some plus three. So when we're looking at mixing mud, a couple things that are necessities are number one, a drill. Um, I would suggest a variable speed. So this one, okay, this one, you can go real slow real fast, but it has a nice easy trigger pull on it. So you can kind of adjust what you're doing when you're mixing. You're going to need a mixing paddle. There's a couple different options. There's just the straight up square, which is nice because it fits well in buckets, especially if you have pumps or anything going on. It's not going to take up a lot of room in the bucket. And then this is the sheetrock paddle style, a little different. Um, this one's pretty sweet too. It does take up more room in your bucket, but it doesn't really matter when it comes down to it. So you usually have these two on hand. We do have a bucket with clean water. We have a brush. Uh, some people like to use sponges. We like to use brushes. It just kind of keeps your hands clean. Here your hands tend to crack out really bad, especially with the cold weather. So brushes are really nice. Um, and then we've got clean water. So we usually fill up two of these minimum per job, just totally full of completely clean water. Finding water, especially on new construction is you're lucky if you can. Um, so we always bring our own water with us, super clean, um, just, you know, from home out of the backyard, or if we can find water at a vacant house, we'll grab water from there, but we've always got our water here. So, um, we're going to go ahead and mix up. Now there is no perfect ratio that I can tell you that will always make sure that your mud turns out perfect because you can't because every four of these boxes right here, they're all going to be different depending on where they were stored, the factory batch that came from, all of those things. So they're all going to be incredibly different from each other. So there's no like set mixing rule. It's a lot of it comes down to feel and then getting the consistency that you're looking for and what you're doing with it. So first things first, we open our box, pull the plastic over to the sides. I always take my knife, kind of give it a check. Like this is pretty dry. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get rid of this yucky mud right here and just set it to the side. We usually have an empty box, but I don't have one super close. Then I'm just going to go ahead and then throw all my mud in the bucket. I take my boxes, do them like that. We use them for trash. You can save the plastic bags too if you want for later and then just toss everything to the side. I'm going to go ahead and take my brush, clean up my sides of my bucket. I don't know why we don't have square buckets that make things so much easier. Go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to take a paddle. Either one works. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of chop it up a little bit here because what happens is when you drop that big block of mud in there, likes to just stay a big block. So it'll just like kind of just spin around in one big block around your bucket. So take it, chop it up, tighten your chuck on your drill, make sure you got space, keep your cord out of your way, and then put your feet around the bucket. The reason I'm doing this is the buckets tend to spin. So if your feet are there and you just hold tight, then the bucket won't move. We're just going to go ahead and mix. So when I'm mixing, I'm about in the center of the bucket. I'm not letting my beater bar or my whip hitting the sides because what happens is you'll like get chunks of your bucket in your mud and then you'll be working and you'll see like whatever color your bucket is. You'll see those little plastic pieces in there. So keep it centered. I'm also moving up and down a little bit side to side, but I'm not going to be pulling it like way out. Like if you've ever, um, mix a cake and you get your beater bars too far out and it's like, psh, psh, and it'll do the same thing. So keep it centered for the most part up and down a little bit, but don't lift it up out of the mud or you'll have a disaster on your hands. And then I'm also using my variable speed, starting off slow and then increasing my speed as needed. So I'm not, I'm also not adding anything. Um, People like to add soap. Don't add soap. 
Trust me, I've done it. Did it for a long time. And I really think where it came from is back in the day, all there was was all purpose. That's all that was made. It was one singular mud and all purpose is kind of tricky to work with sometimes. So I really think that with the modern muds that we have now, like plus three, a lot of the lightweight muds, a lot of the topping and finishing muds, they are changed. They're not that, that old school mud anymore that they used to be. And adding soap just makes it burn your eyes. And if you drop it in your eyes, it hurts really bad. And soap makes bubbles. So in my mind, soap is not getting rid of bubbles. It's just adding bubbles. So we don't add soap or anything like that to our mud because we don't need to. So what I'll do is depending on my task and what I'm doing will depend on my mud consistency. So this is really thick right now. Like that is ridiculously thick. What you can do is you can pull your beater bar out and you can test how thick your mud is. So depending on your task, like if I was first coating metal corner bead, I would run this. But running this through a box or trying to do any kind of screw spotting or hand taping with this, no way, you're gonna be cursing yourself. So take it, check it, add more water as needed. You can add out of this, you can add from your brush. And then just add in at small increments until you get your mix right. again and that water made it thin just that little bit of water made it thin down a lot so that's like really nice consistency right there really easy to work with as you can tell it's smooth I have not added any soap to this or any sort of byproduct at all so that's just mud and water and that's it so that's really all you're gonna need. The muds are formulated to take water. I think there's this crazy idea that they should just be used straight out of the box and any amount of water that you're adding to it is gonna take away the properties of the mud. It's not, it's made to take water. So use nice clean water, don't use hot mud water, don't add any easy sand to this stuff, just keep it straight up how it is and it'll be awesome for you, super smooth. Just takes a couple seconds to mix up a bucket and then you'll be much happier with your results and your mud will be much, much smoother. So that's it for me. Um, variable drill, beater bar of your choice, clean water, bucket, brush or sponge, whatever you're using and just kind of mess around with your consistencies until you get it right. So you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and YouTube. I'm the Drywall Shorty, and I will check you guys next week on the Build Show Network.